for those of you coming for the first time, uh, the ethos here is, is one of sharing information. Uh, it's one of collaboration between organizations uh, and mainly, and quite often, it's about networking. Everybody knows the Tate and Lyle brand name, but um, we are the world's largest refiners of cane sugar, uh, which is sourced from many developing countries around the world. And um, we're committed to running a sustainable business, both for the benefit of our employees, our customers, and our suppliers. There's this question of whether whether more sustainable uh, ways of eating are actually better for human health. And the good news is that they do. They mostly overlap. So that nice double pyramid uh, on the right there is from the Barilla Centre shows that there's a real overlap between the stuff that's better for us and the stuff that's better for the planet on the whole. So we need to think about what we're eating as well as how we get that food to the consumer. I think we really need to be more ambitious. We need to be aiming for restorative impacts, both environmentally and on human systems, because we've done so much damage already, um, and particularly in food. You know, we know that we need to replenish soil, not just stop eroding it. So, um, definitely worth moving towards the sort of repair side of, of uh, ambitions rather than just reducing negative impact. To me, it encompasses. Um, the environmental, the social and the governance impacts of, of everything that we do and, and a business's role within society. You see, if you buy a car, you check it out. You buy a house, you get it surveyed. You buy clothes, you look in the mirror and ask your friend, how do I look? But if you don't buy good food or you don't source ethically, where is the question? Would it be useful if there was some sort of, like there is for the ISO standards and for BSI and for NR, LRQA, etc., the and exams, a UK accreditation service. So each mark was accredited to some form of, was accredited and like given a score as to how legitimate and how. Um, how they measure their integrity to give people a little bit more understanding. We've had a lot of celebrations. If you look from a certification point of view, one of the things that I always find incredible is the fact that McDonald's source 100% of their fish as MSC, 100% of their coffee as rainforest and organic milk. Now, I never even thought that would have been possible when I started. We don't need for me to come into your business and say, I want you to achieve this. And I don't need to come into your business and hear you say, I want to achieve this and then try and map it. Let's look to the future and then work out how we're going to try and achieve it. What we're looking for really is, is a simplified approach to the certification process and, and talking to consumers, what they want to know is what's best for them, what are the stories around the marks and how, how can they get that across to their own consumers. I mean, for me, in the UK, we are in a fairly unique position where fair trade is a lot stronger than a lot of other certifications so the reason I say that is because if you look across Europe there's UTS, Rainforest Alliance have much more consumer pool so the, the certification mark is very relevant to the market that it's within and there's a few organisations that I think can help with that choice so number one being ISEAL so ISEAL is the the certification for certifications, if you like. Uh, if it's not a member of ISEAL, just don't even bother, because there's a reason that ISEAL exists, and it's to make sure that we're all doing what we, what we say we're doing. My own personal view is that I think when you, one of the dangers of having standards is that every, it's kind of a race to just essentially achieve the minimum. What is it you're trying to achieve? What are you actually trying to address? And then you can work out which particular scheme or, or partner or whatever it is, or challenger even, is going to help you get there. Okay. Well, part of the thing that I could be doing is working with a partner who is a mark that says they're going into my supply chain to check. And if you have a complex supply chain and you can't get down every angle of every different part of your supply chain yourself, you're going to have to give somebody else responsibility for doing that on your behalf, okay. whether it's your supplier or a third party certifier. 
Okay. So, yeah, I agree with you. I think it really does help to raise, you know, it's a common denominator. It gets past the arguments about cost and whether or not there's a, you know, return on investment, etc., etc. This is a point. It, it, what it does is it, is it makes it a, uh, a fair playing field for everybody rather than I have to take the first step to be the individual and then try and get benefit out of that. What I would say, though, yes. um, was that, is that uh, this is where being a business that's thought about its sustainability position and its, the ethics of its supply chain puts you in a huge, huge advantage because when the legislation comes, of course, if you haven't thought about any of that stuff, you've got your work cut out. Yeah.